What's up guys, this is Chit Chat with Joshua. Today, I'll be discussing the minimum wage um, in Singapore especially. So I chose this topic today because I believe it's gained um, more media attention in recent years, especially in the last general election where there was some um, increasing contention between um, the two major parties in Singapore being PAP and WP about uh, potential implementation of a minimum wage in Singapore. So um, throughout this video, It'll be a couple of minutes. I'll be explaining um, the pros and cons that I see, right, in um, of our implementation of minimum wage, as well as my final ev- evaluation and thoughts on whether an implement to, whether the implementation of a minimum wage would be beneficial to Singaporeans in Singapore. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, first, let's discuss what exactly does minimum wage, you know. A minimum wage really mean so essentially um, in terms of economics a minimum wage can be termed um, a wage floor which which basically means that the salary which which are uh, which employers are capable to pay to their employees cannot go cannot go below a certain level what this results in basically is an increased supply of workers because more people are willing to work since they promised a greater salary due to the minimum wage while fall in demand uh, for workers because well producers have to pay more employers have to pay more so why would they be willing you know to pay more so this could result in a difference you know between the supply of laborers and actual demand for laborers in different different firms across the various industries in Singapore so now that I've um, given out the now that I've illustrated you know the overall picture of how a minimum wage works and what it really means uh, let me move into what I see are the pros and cons of minimum wage and I'll try and tune it to a Singapore context. So I'll begin with um, the pros of minimum wage in Singapore. Okay, so a rather superficial um, benefit that I can see is that in Singapore, especially due to Singapore's um, high cost of living, um, a minimum wage would ensure that uh, low-income citizens would be able to afford basic necessities like you know, food, water, shelter, and clothing, and um, in turn be able to um, support themselves, you know, and provide for themselves, capable to create, um, able, capable to forge for themselves a decent standard of living. This in turn would result in a reduced income inequality, as um, the mi- minimum wage would help those in the lower income bracket, and thus increase you know their annual income this will reduce the income gap between singapore's top one percent and singapore's bottom one percent in terms of um, uh, annual income another benefit that i can see of a minimum wage is the simple fact that an implementation of a minimum wage could in fact um, raise you know the average citizen's purchasing power and disposable income because their annual income has increased so what does this mean, you know, purchasing power, disposable income? What do these, like, terminology mean? On average, people would have more money and thus be able and willing to buy more goods and services, no matter what these goods and services are. So what, w- what would be the um, impact of such a policy, such a, such a consequence of minimum wage? Well, one uh, clear-cut consequence would be that there would be increased demand for goods and services, right? Because they have more money, because the every citizen has more money, so it increased demand for goods and services in a variety of sectors. It will in turn result in um, um, suppliers and producers being more willing to produce goods because since there's more demand, right? People are willing are more willing to pay to buy their buy certain services. Suppliers are willing to supply it because well, they can make more of a profit. You know, they can make more money. So why wouldn't they? But this in turn results in producers ramping up production and wanting to produce more, increase the rate of production. But how is this possible? How can you just increase the level of production? Well, one key method right, to increase the level of production is to employ more workers, have more people producing certain goods, have more people producing certain, um, uh, have more people employed in the manufacturing line, such stuff like this. So ultimately, by implementation of a minimum wage, it will result in increasing purchasing power and disposable income, increase in 
um, supply of goods and services as firms are trying to make a profit, greater profit, which in turn results in increased demand for labor, um, uh, increased demand of labor for the suppliers, which in turn will lower the unemployment rate. So this is such a big win. You know, by lowering unemployment rate, there's a myriad, a myriad of uh, benefits. Most, uh, most clearly or most obviously would be the simple fact that by lowering the unemployment rate, more individuals will be able to provide financially for their families and themselves, you know, creating a stable, a stable, uh, stable home structure, which will in turn um, make society more stable you know, and more coherent and um, less contentious as people are more satisfied with their lives. In addition, having been gainfully employed has been shown in studies um, such as the 2018 masculinity report by um, a men's grooming company, um, Harry's, I believe it was called, which found that an employment, you know, was very important in finding meaning in, in men's lives. So another benefit that I could think of, right, is of, um, of implementation of minimum wage, especially in Singapore where we have a tight labor market, meaning we have a, there's a massive demand for labor, but we have a very low supply, is the fact that minimum wage would actually force firms to automate and move themselves into the 21st century. So that was a number of different different ideas in that last point. So let me try and unpack it now. So the reason why I say that Singapore has a rather tight labor market where they have, um, where there's a big demand for labor but a small supply is due to two or three reasons. Namely, first, uh, Singapore has an aging population where um, a large proportion of our workforce is getting older and older, you know, reaching retirement age, surpassing retirement age, where many of these individuals are facing more and more physical challenges and uh, cognitive decline, reducing their ability to actually work. To make the situation worse, we actually have declining birth rates. So our population is getting older and our birth rates are very low. So... This rapidly is reducing the size of our, of our of our population, which is capable of working. So, with a quick, with a rapidly falling um, supply of labor, by a rising demand, that Singapore becomes more and more competitive on the world stage. The difference between demand and supply for labor is drastically becoming further and further apart. Now, to reduce this drastic distortion, one method is to force firms to be get, become less reliant on workers. This can be done by the implementation of the minimum wage, where firms are forced to um, reduce the reliance on laborers in their production methods by becoming more focused on capital, uh, by, on, on using physical capital, such as machinery, robots, uh, where, where, they, where they really try to just automate the process, removing, um, removing demand for labor, especially on low-skilled jobs. This would lower demand for labor, which would reduce the, which would help reduce the um, rising difference between demand and supply for labor in Singapore. This, um, but actually, an additional benefit right, of this policy would be that by forcing firms to you know, move into the 21st century, become more competitive, would actually force firms to um, rethink the business model, rethink how they run the procedure, to find a, a more complementary and more um, efficient production method between um, physical capital being machinery and human capital being laborers by finding this new um, um, you know proportion between the, between laborers and between a uh, machinery finding a more efficient one as well it will result in the company's production levels increasing the productive productive capacity increasing so these suppliers these producers will be capable of producing more goods which in turn ultimately actually grants them a profit because they can sell more correct so Twofold, there were two benefits. One being, you reduce the gap between um, demand and supply for labor. The other reason why um, I said minimum wage would be good with relation to automation is that it results in productive capacity and productivity, you know, efficiency of firms in Singapore improving. So now that I've listed out, you know, those few positives of a minimum wage in Singapore, I'd like to move on to why um, a minimum wage is not that good, why it's not the greatest policy, you know to be implemented.